I think we have to reflect on two or three things of a positive nature. One is that the British Armed Forces carried out their duty extremely well and professionally, and everyone can have a sense of pride as far as that is concerned, albeit that we had to fight quite hard with the government for the resources that we needed to do the job. And I think secondly, we need to reflect on, notwithstanding what's happened in the last few days, but that over the previous 5, 10, 15 years, we have helped transform the then uh, Afghan society, uh, make it more progressive, give women a proper place in that society, and allow girls to be educated, none of which was going on under the Taliban. Now, I know that that is being swept away, but the issue that we have to, to watch and wait to see what happens is what the Taliban of 2021 looks like, as opposed to the Taliban of 2001. But to the soldier, and I don't know his name, you haven't told me, who lost his legs, uh, all I can say is that his service is extraordinarily valued um, and that he did achieve a lot. But sadly, in current circumstances, um, strategic errors have been made and um, it looks as if the situation in Afghanistan has completely turned itself around. Jack Cummings, uh, former Royal Engineer 101 Engineer Regiment, is who I'm talking about. Um, we see the Taliban with their feet up on the presidential desk. We see the Brits and those that worked with us, for us, rushing to the airport to get out of the country as quickly as they can. What sort of message does that send to others around the world that we would try to um, get into our confidence if we were to find ourselves in another conflict? Well, in the short term, it sends a terrible message. <clears throat> it's a, it sends a terrible message about the capability of the United Kingdom but I think probably transcending that, uh, it says it sends a terrible message about the degree of influence that the United States can have. I, I think we would all accept without uh, undue finger pointing that President Biden's decision to withdraw all US and therefore effectively all international troops by the 20th anniversary of 9-11 just in a few days time was most unfortunate and precipitate. And it, it, and it is the factor which has caused these circumstances to, to unfold. But I think there's a wider point. Um, we must have a formal inquiry. We must analyze what happened over the last 20 years, the strategic decision-making, the operational level campaign planning, and what went on on the ground, and identify the lessons and learn the lessons, so that if we are going to get involved in another conflict, another counterinsurgency operation in the future, somewhere else in the world, we can do it better drawing on these unfortunate experiences of Afghanistan. We, you lost so many men. We lost so many men and women, 459, I think, during the course of the Afghan conflict. Um, how much does it stick in your craw to see um, the Taliban flag now flying over the British embassy? Well, it's, it, it's nothing short of a tragedy. Um, and... I feel it very strongly. As you said in your introduction, I was the head of the British Army for three years when we first went back into South Afghanistan in 2006. And I felt responsible for the soldiers under my command then. I still feel responsible for those soldiers who fought in that campaign now, which is why instead of giving up and going to play golf and just um, getting on with being retired, I'm very much engaged in, in these issues and doing what we can to support our bereaved families, those who have been injured, uh, but also, as I've just said, to make the government look at itself, look in the mirror, uh, have an inquiry, decide what went right, what went wrong, and learn lessons from what went wrong so that we continue to improve and get it right next time. But it takes nothing away, and I've already said that in this conversation, the British soldier, sailor, airman and marine on the ground did everything that was required of them, both in Afghanistan and also in Iraq over the last 20 years, and I have huge admiration for their professionalism, and the country should also salute that professionalism and dedication, even if eventually, strategically, not through our own fault, uh, a tragedy has unfolded in Afghanistan. Can we accept that potentially the Taliban has also changed during those two decades and they are now an organisation that we can do business with? Well, I don't know, Kay. Uh, I think time is going to have to tell um, what the Taliban of 2021 looks like compared to the Taliban of 2001. If it's the latter, then I fear for much of civil society in Afghanistan, for women in, in that society and for the education of girls uh, in particular. But um, we'll have to wait and see what the Taliban of 2021 
looks like. Um, however, they can't live in isolation. They will need allies. Yes, of course, Pakistan being another Islamic state will undoubtedly um, be in collaboration and cooperation with them. Um, I don't think they're going to get too much truck from Iran on the other side, being a, a Shia uh, Muslim state. But um, the Taliban will have to show themselves to be responsible if they want to be taken seriously and if other governments are going to recognize them. Certainly, as far as the British government is concerned, we want to be very cautious before we even think about recognizing that government to see what it looks like, to see what its civil society is going to be looking like, um, and whether or not it's protecting its people or oppressing them. The chairman of the um, Defence Select Committee, Tobias Elwood, as you know, said that you know China is already showing the Taliban some ankles, so we will have to keep an eye on what happens as far as that is concerned. He also warned uh, about a civil war in Afghanistan. Are you concerned about that? Well, Kay, one has to be concerned about that. Um, it's, uh, it's always been a fragmented society. Um, I mean, Tobias Elwood in the past has criticised, and I understand his criticism, of the attempt by the Western allies to impose a centralised uh, political structure on Afghanistan. Um, I'm not sure that we had many alternatives. I mean, if we had encouraged them to develop a fragmented um, local, maybe even warlord-based society, I, I think that would have been a recipe for, for difficulty as well. But um, we are where we are, looking forward. I think Tobias is concerned, as indeed I'm concerned, that we may well find that there is a return to civil war. Um, the Northern Alliance that was significant in 2001 to sweep out the Taliban originally, I think they've probably now withdrawn to the, uh, the stands to the north. They will regroup, rearm. We may well see uh, them coming in from the north again. The south, which has always been the Pashtun, uh, therefore Taliban heartland, will probably remain pretty solidly behind the Taliban. So I'm afraid, uh, looking at Afghanistan over the next five, 10 years, there is a recipe for continuing conflict. It's a tragedy. Um, we've given it a really good shot over the last 20 years to change Afghanistan, but the will of the Afghan government has been eroded. The morale of the Afghan national forces has been undermined and the rapid advance of the Taliban over the last few days is the inevitable consequence. It is a tragedy. Thank you, my lord.